Hello, and welcome to the second lesson in the first feta. I hope you have had a really good period. I don't know if it's been a week or how long it's been for you. I hope that your, that your process is going well. I hope there has been a lot of frustration, a lot of resistance, a lot of curiosity and a lot of insightful conversations with, with people, with your guide, online. And I hope that you are thrilled about this process. I hope that there's a lot of things happening that didn't happen before you start them, started this process. And I'm really happy if that is the case. If you're super, super frustrated, I'm really, really happy because that's, that's a great place to be. Being super frustrated is a very, very good place to be. There's so many things that are up in the air and open that makes you believe that, that what you experience is truth. There's a lot of beliefs in that. There's a lot of identifying in that. And it's a great place to be, to having insight. So, yeah. So I hope, I hope that is your experience so far. As I said, this one is the second lesson for the first feta. Now, that doesn't mean that it needs to be the second lesson that you watch. And you're also going to find that as the years go by and there's going to be accumulated more and more and more material for the entire process, then... This lesson might actually be the most valuable lesson for you when you are in the seventh feta or the ninth feta or the sixth feta, further along. Because even though that we're trying to create concepts by putting it into small, neat boxes, that doesn't mean that that is how it is. You know, we, we are human beings, we react differently, and there are as many different ways to do feta work as there are people on the planet. It's about identifying. It's about finding out what you identify with and all the fetters, they are basically there for you to tweak your experience to find out which aspect is issue in your life right now. So whenever you're tied into a belief that, that you are there, that you understood it, then I can recommend you to go back <laughs> because you probably haven't. There's probably something that you need to pick up. There's, uh, as soon as we have an idea that we, that we are sorted, settled, I get it, I get it, then you can be quite sure that you don't. And it, it's, not, it's not meant to provoke in any way. It's just the way that it is. Every time I have the feeling that, okay, I understood it, then I just give it time because I know <laughs> it's, it's a matter of time until I'm, I'm realizing something new or something else about the same topic or the same fetter or the same, you know, experience, same relationship or whatever it is, then there's just another tweak that makes me understand different things about it. So you being here, and I don't mean here watching this right now, I mean being alive, it's just an indication that there's, there's more to learn, you know, you're, you're not there yet. So whenever you feel that, ah, now I get it, then just, you know, take a breather, relax a bit and and wait for the next insight to come because you, you don't get it yet. Yeah. It's also something you're going to experience if you are in in groups that the ones that are further along in the process than you, the, the ones that have realized other things that the ones you have realized, um, they're going to say the same thing. It's never done. It's never ever done. And the fetus just helps us to to look at what aspect we need to dive into, you know, to be inquisitive about. So this lesson here is just as useful for you now as it's going to be at a later point. In the previous lesson, we talked about that you have the selfing, you have the I, the one that believe itself to exist. It's the ego that is placing itself in the middle of everything with everyone around it. And either you are with them or you are against them. So there's never any calm at any point. It has a very, very profound I am not, I should be mentality, which means that enough is never enough. There's always more to achieve. There's always something bigger, higher, longer, more. Um, the ego is never, ever content. And... That is a delusion. That doesn't exist. There's no I that can be placed anywhere. There's no individual you-ness placed anywhere. There's no Penilliness here, you know? Um, 
And look, realizing that, really looking into that and seeing that it's all assumptions. Everything you believe to be real is just an assumption about something. And that's the thing about thought. Thought is always about something. It's never here. It's never present right now. It's always about something. And selfing is always happening in the future with expectations or in the past with regrets. It's never ever present right here. So you can sit and enjoy the sunshine and it's beautiful and then think, oh, it would be nice to have a blanket. That's <laughs> selfing being put straight in the middle of a, of a beautiful experience that is just happening right now, as it is right now. And the selfing is, is removing the experience from reality where it's actually happening and putting it into an, a pretend future, which is going to be better than this one because then I have a blanket. Completely crazy. Another thing that we talked about in the last lesson is that most thoughts, they have no value besides the value you have just put into it. You have just added a value to the experience that you have or to the thought that you have. But it is important that I'm thinking about this. You might have had that thought multiple times since you saw the last, the last teaching that, uh, that, that this is important. I need, to th- I need to think about this. I need to, to reflect on this. I need to um, look into this. I need to... Are you sure? Are you sure you need to anything? Are you sure? When you have that grasping for something, then you have removed yourself from what actually is. And you cannot will yourself into insight. You, you, that, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. You cannot will yourself into a being awake. You can understand it intellectually, but that, that is not leaving you anywhere. You know, It's just giving you an intellectual understanding of it. You still haven't experienced it. Um, and the first three fetters, they can be done intellectually. Easily, very, very easily. You can intellectually understand the concepts of what I'm talking about. When we come to the fourth and the fifth, which is about desire, all the things you want, and ill will, all the things you don't want, then you can't fake it anymore. And I also think it's one of the reasons why, why so many people they stop, so they stop the process when they reach the fourth and the fifth, because Life is so comfortable when people when you can you know project a lot of things into other people. So nice. Then you don't need to look at it yourself. Then you don't need to really realize that it's not about other people ever. It's about you. It's about you not being present right now. And if you want to see where humanity is at, then look in the comment section. Not particularly mine. I think my comment section is amazing. <laughs> but, you know, go on Facebook. Oh, Facebook is a good place. And then, you know, read all the Karen posts in there. You know, you're getting such a good insight to four and five when you go to a comment section. And you get such a good insight to your projections into other people, into your identification about yourself and about other people and about the truth and about lots of things when you're in a comment section. Because nobody is there. I mean, reality is not played out in a comment section. It's not. It's not. Reality is what is happening while you're sitting with your computer and your eyes is on the comment section. As soon as you read it, then thinking is happening. And then a post-it is added to the thought that you have about what you just read, which means you're not here anymore. You're not here. You're in the comment. You're in the thought. You're in what's going on. So there's no presence at all in a comment section, or online for that matter. It's not said enough, and I really would like to emphasize this right now. The only way, the only way that you're ever going to get awake is if you allow yourself silence. And I know it's not one of the popular ones. You would like for me to say, you listen to this and do that and all that, but it's, it's not really where it happens. It's like when you work out, you know, it's not so much in the workout that the real work is happening. It's it's when you rest, when the muscle are resting afterwards. That is when the muscle fiber is working and growing and becoming stronger, you know? It's the same with, uh, with, with awareness. Whatever you hear that, that you feel this is profound, then give yourself silence. And it's also why meditation works. Um, 
and it's also why there's no one meditation that work because you need the you need the type of meditation that gives you silence and if that is metabhavana or if that is mindfulness of breathing or if that is walking meditation or if that is just sitting or if that is chanting or doing a puja or whatever whatever gives you silence where you really have quiet so all the thoughts are left and you're just present then everything that everything you have heard everything all the small nuggets that has been added to your consciousness they're going to fall into place it's also why um you often experience that that you might have an issue a problem that you can't really solve then you leave it you fall asleep and in the morning you know what to do it's because of the silence um one of my favorite meditations is is just sitting it's just being with what is present and i always get profound insights when i do it and i don't think it's because of the meditation i think it's because i'm just sitting you know just letting silence be silence and whatever thoughts come i just release it and release it and release it whatever sound i hear i just release it whatever smell comes i just release it and i'm just silent and that's when the insights happen so it's it's important for you also that don't just f- fill fill yourself up you need time to digest as well just like don't just eat all the time you need time to digest so have you found out where that i is placed if i ask you now to feel into reality have you found out where the i is placed is it placed in the thoughts is it placed in your body what what if you have your legs amputated are you then less you is it is it in your opinions is any opinion ever true can any opinion be true so how much do you assume right now which is fantasy and how much is true how much is reality right now and how do you know the difference did you look into that did you find out i would love to hear so feel free to write me in the comment section so what i talked about regarding selfing is that it's a part of our senses we have ears where we have hearing we have eyes where we have seeing we have nose where we have smelling we have mouth where we have tasting we have the entire body where we have feeling where we have sensory feelings and then we have the thought and that is where the selfing is happening the selfing is where we place ourselves in the middle of every story everything that is happening we're placing ourselves in the middle the ego is selfing itself into the middle and it's seeing everyone around it as outside of it so the value you put into a thought is showing how much you're selfing if you put a lot of a value into a thought if you believe that you're right about this then you are selfing a lot in that area and i can recommend you right now to pause the video make a list of all the things that you really believe strongly in it can be political ideology it can be animals rights it can be human rights it can be <laughs> whatever you really believe is true you know i would like for you to write that down write that down and then go over the list in in your group or uh, with your guide and really question is this true is this reality is any opinion that i have whatever whatever you believe to be true to be right it's just a belief whatever you believe to be right there are equally many that believe the opposite there are equally many that that do not agree with that being right so can it be true and if it's not something that ex- is experienced first hand experienced right now then it's not true then it's a thought and selfing is taking place you are identifying yourself with the thought with the belief and saying that is me it's not it's just selfing it's just a thought so that is obviously also something where whenever you say i in a sentence then you're selfing 
I wonder what they're thinking about me. I wonder what I should wear. I wonder how I should formulate it. I wonder all that you're selfing. I know that it's it's difficult to hear right now, but when we get to the ninth, all those patterns that you have where you arrange yourself and believe that you need to plan things, they're going to fall away when we get to that. So right now, it's more about you just writing all of it down because you're going to use it. You might not use it today or tomorrow or next month or this year, but you it's, it's very useful for you to write all that down. Don't filter it out in any, in any way. Nobody's going to read it. It's just for you. And you decide if you don't want anybody else to read it or hear it or talk about it. But right now, just allow yourself to write all that down, all of it. Every single, but I am right. Write why you are right. Write the proof of why you are right. Um, really go into detail with it. And don't hold back. Don't censor yourself and think, oh no, I shouldn't say about this. Just write all of it. Go on, write all of it. So a thought is anything that you are that you are thinking, obviously. Reality is what is what, what really is. So you can have a friend sitting next to you and what they it's like the the, the baby step way to find out if something is reality or not. Um, if it's thought, then obviously it's fantasy. If somebody else is sitting next to you and, and seeing their view, then it's reality. It's like the baby step of it. They're, we're tweaking that later on. But right now, though, that's, that's how you see it. Which means that you are so annoyed at your mom because she's always correcting you, let's say. And then you have a friend over for, for dinner and you say, I would like a glass of water. And your mom goes, wouldn't you rather have a glass of wine? And you go, always, always, you're correcting me always. And your friend goes, what? She just asked her if you want a glass of wine. Because we are adding so much, so much, so much. And that's also one of my favorite quotes. <laughs> if, if you think you're enlightened, go spend a weekend with your family. And I think it was Ramdas. That's it. That is so true. So true. Oh, you think you're enlightened. Mm-hmm. I have a suggestion. Because we are selfing so much. We're putting ourselves in the center all the time. And we believe what we're selfing about is true. So whatever you think is true, it's not. It's just a subjective fantasy. Nothing else. And when you're with friends, then I would recommend you to see how you assume that you are in the center of their attention. Notice when you're with them how you place yourself in the center all the time, that the selfing is placing you in the center of attention all all the time, and you're not. You're never anyone's center of attention, (laughs) ever. You can't be, because they have their selfing in their center of attention. So we're never really present with anyone. It's very rare that you meet people where you are present and aware and they are present and aware and it stays like that. It's beautiful when it happens. Really, really rare. Because most people are selfing about themselves all the time. If you haven't seen through self, then you are too. And sometimes you might you have might have seen through self, and then sometimes you get super super self conscious. You know you can't be because there is no self, but you're still very conscious. You know if you find out that after two and a half hour you find out you have spinach in your teeth, like let's say, then you might find out that you that you're super self conscious about you know you having spinach and how many people saw that and what did they think and all of that. At some point you're just removing the spinach and going like. Never mind. Never mind. The selfing is also the part that, and I have made a lot of videos about this, uh, that is wanting you to be different. That wants you to lose weight or be stronger or be fitter or be something else than what you actually are. And a lot of us uh, want that because we want to look good in the perception of other people. How do you ever know what other people perceive about you? No, seriously. How do you ever know that? You never ever know what other people perceive. And whatever other people perceive about you is with their ego selfing backpack on, you know? So we're never really present and aware when we are with other people. 
the majority of time, we are completely selfing about it. You're not even on other people's radar. They have no idea what's going on because they're so selfing about themselves. So fill into reality right now. Do you see the two realities happening at the same time? One reality is where you are walking around with your self-created, ego-inflated, selfing backpack, which is filled up with future expectations and past regrets and past assumptions. And we do that about ourselves and about everybody else. That is one reality. The other reality is the real one. It's the one where there's just being. Do you see how it's completely impossible how you can ever think anything about other people that has anything to do with them? And you also see how it's completely impossible how other people can ever think anything about you that has anything to do with you. What other people think of you is none of your business. What other people think of you is based on their backpack. Whatever they're carrying around, whatever assumptions they did in the past, whatever they are assuming that you're doing right now. Because if they were present, they would look at what is present right now. And they're not. They're taking reference in the backpack. So you are not, the real you are not even on their radar. Just like you don't have them on your radar. You're completely tied into your own backpack, into whatever you assume to be truth based on your assumptions. And what you assume to be truth is everything that you are assuming and judging and the beliefs you have created, the conclusions you are making, the reckoning and the guessing and all the hunches and all the speculations that you have. All that is creating your backpack. And that backpack is what you are hearing through when people talk to you. So how do you ever know that you're really hearing what people are saying? How can you be absolutely certain? How can you hear anything that anybody is saying if it's not recognizing what you believe them to say, assume them to say, but it's not really what they're saying? So do you see that you can't really know anything but what is reality. You cannot know anything but what really is. Everything else is fantasy. Everything is mind created. So in reality, there is a pure experience and that is just that. Every assumption that you have is that if you feel a tickle on the neck, that in itself is just a tickle on the neck. The assumption is, oh, it's a spider. And then you find out it was just a hair. That is an assumption. How much do you do that every single day about so many different things? You cannot go to your fridge. You cannot go for a walk. You cannot reach out for a book. You cannot get dressed. You cannot do anything without assuming, without judgment, without concluding. You will at some point, but right now it's all that is happening. And if you believe that it's not happening, then that is a belief too. Because when it is happening without anything else, then it's just happening. Then it's just happening. That is what we talk about in the ninth fetter. That is when when things just happen. You do not plan for it to happen. It just happens. So dressing, being dressed is being is happening, eating is happening, groceries, shopping is happening. It's not planned or anything, it just happens. And there's no hooks into anything but what is just happening. But until that happens, we assume that we're there and we're not. That is just an assumption. So realizing that everything is just assumption. You also see how you can't know anything in your mind. Everything in your own mind is thought created with the selfing happening while you put yourself in the middle 
or at the center of the attention. Can you also see you can absolutely not know anything that involves anyone else? How would that be possible? So I just want to really reiterate that in the two realities, nothing you think about yourself or assume about yourself is real. Nothing you assume about other people is real. Nothing other people assume about you is real either. So all the fighting, all the arguments, all the family feuds, <laughs> all that, it can dissolve the moment you realize that there is no I. There is no you. When you really see that, all that dissolves because it's only mind made. It's not real. It's not real. There is no I to have a family feud. There is no I to hold a grudge. If you have issues about this, then take note, pause the video, make a lot of notes, write all your obstructions, all your anger issues, all of it, write all of it down and then talk about it in the group or talk about it with your guide. So it's all about the mental formations around you. I'm not saying that you find out that the physical world around you, the the cars and the people and the houses is not there. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the cars and the houses and the people are mental formations. And we create mental formations about the car and the houses and the people. So I acknowledge the car and the houses and the people. What is going to dissolve is the assumption about the cars and the houses and the people. And we're back to the, to the point that I talked about before, that there are two realities. There's the fantasy and there's reality. So you can walk through a town like this one here in the picture and you can see all of it and you can be with all of it being there, but you cannot have an opinion about it. So saying it's beautiful or not beautiful or wishing it to be different, that can't happen because that is mental formation. But just being with what is, that is what is reality. What I would like for you to do after this lesson is to pay attention in conversations. Most people, they have that self-inflated, ego-created, selfing eye with themselves placed in the, in the center of attention. They have that present in every single conversation, which means that they're not there. You're not really listening. You are. Most people are preparing what they want to reply to the things that are said right now. That is not present, and that is not, you know honest communication and, and present awareness. That is just you selfing into a conversation. And how do you ever know if what you hear is what is actually said? You only know if you really pay attention and you're curious to what is said. Because whatever you assume is said is based on you, not the other person. So you need to be curious as to what you assume and what is really said. And I would like for you to do that after this, after this lesson. Go back to paying attention to conversations. You're going to realize that most conversations you're just quiet in. Because as soon as you want to respond or react to what is said, that is selfing. Whereas if you just listen, if you're quiet and you just listen, then you're going to hear what is actually said. And then you create silence, allow silence to be in a conversation as well. So you allow silence to be there. And then you let whatever response happen, happen. So whatever is happening in you as a response, you allow it to be. And then be curious towards that. You don't need to respond. You don't need to say anything. You don't need to be, you know, clever or respond to anything. It's completely okay to, to say... A, I just need to think about that. And then create silence. Create space to what you're thinking about. See if you can stop thinking and just feel into what is said. This is particularly useful when you're in an argument with somebody. Some people have the, have the ability to argue with themselves. You know, they could be on a desert island and <laughs> start an argument. Um realizing that and being with that and, and experiencing that and being curious towards that. It's not about you anyway. Whatever they say, you are always, la, la, la. It's never about you. Can't be. Can't be. They're only talking about their expectations 
about what you should do and their assumptions of what you didn't do. It's not about you at all. You're not even on their radar. So it's very easy in arguments just to be quiet and observe. And don't observe the other person. Never mind them. They can do that with their therapist. <laughs> observe you. Observe what, what is happening in you. Do you get the urge to defend yourself? Verbally, I don't mean physically. If you're in a dangerous situation, then get yourself to safety, obviously. But do you get the need to verbally defend yourself? Do you get a, um, and, and what is it you want to defend? Do you want to defend your belief? Do you want to defend your assumption of what they, what you think they think about you? Is that what you want to defend? Are you sure? And how is that going to work? If, if they assume something about you, how are you going to change that? Seriously. How can you do that? You even have a hard time changing your beliefs about you. How are you going to change beliefs that you assume other people hold about you? How is that even possible? So I'm not saying that you should go, go out and pick a fight, but it would be great if you would experience a fight, if you would experience somebody getting really annoyed or angry at you. That would be great. Just for you to observe you. You can always at any point say, you know what, you're completely right, and then end it, right? And then observe what happens in you when you just withdraw and go like, but they are right, they are right. Everything they say about me, they are right. And whatever resistance you have towards this, write it down, because we're going to use it when we get to the fifth. Right now, you should look at everything you have written down and see how much identification is taking place, how much uh, selfing is taking place, and how much you are actually, how much of your day are you actually aware and present in what is happening. When you are in communication with other people, how much presence do you actually have, and how much are you not here at all? And you are not even on your radar. They are not even on your radar. Another thing I would like for you to try uh, after this lesson is enter a conversation unprepared. Uh, most of us, we prepare for conversations that we're going to have, that we think about what's going to happen, what we're going to say, they're going to say, we're going to say, they're going to say. Enter a conversation unprepared because then you you really get an opportunity to discover all the selfing happening, all the identification happening. And it, it puts you in a position where you really, really can observe where you are, where you believe you are, not actually where you are because you're here now, but where you believe that you are. So awareness after this lesson, I would like for you to keep noticing when you're in fantasy and when you're in reality and how do you know the difference. I would like for you to notice when selfing is taking place and then observe the selfing that is taking place. You don't have to change anything. Just observe the selfing taking place. Um, find out when that is particularly happening. I would like for you to enter conversations unprepared to see what is happening to see the identification that you put into the conversation, into you, um, and just be present with whatever is happening. I would like for you to notice what silence does to a conversation. When you pull your awareness from the planning and preparing and talking and all that, and just into a pure being, and you're just present with what is right now, how much does silence change the way you communicate and how much does it invite you into discovering what you're identifying with right now. And the last thing I would like for you to notice is something which we're going to talk about next time. I would like for you to notice the difference between a response and a reaction. And is there a difference? In the identifying selfing ego backpack <laughs> story of expectations and assumptions and regrets. Is there a difference between reacting and responding? And we're going to talk about that next time. So that was it for now. 
Um, use your groups. Use your guide. Feel free to write me uh, if you're a member. Feel free to to connect with me there and, and, and write to me if you have any questions at all. Uh, make notes about everything that you're thinking of and, and do it without censorship. censorship. Just make your notes. Just write down what is happening. Um, you might not need to use all of it now. Some of it you might look at and go like, I cannot see the end of this one. And then just leave it. It's completely fine. Completely fine. Um, we're not at the end yet. <laughs> well, we are, but that's another story. <laughs> and the final thing I would like to say is thank you. I know that I say that a lot, but I am so grateful that you're doing this process. Not that you are doing this feta work or watching this video. Obviously, I'm grateful for that too. No, I'm grateful that you're doing feta work because your impact on the world is huge. As soon as you realize that there's no identifying, there's no I to identify with, there's nobody to hold a grudge, there's nobody to assume anything about other people, there's nobody to like or dislike, all that is selfing and happening in your mind. When you let that go and you're just present in the world, then you're healing the world with the ripple effect. Your mere being is healing the world. And I really would like to thank you for that. Thank you.